Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to Introduction to Psychology, or more specifically, Introduction to Biological and Cognitive Psychology, which is the first part of our two-part intro psych course. So this is PSYA01. Uh, it is followed in the winter term by PSYA02, and in fact, the two courses are two halves of, of one you know, larger introduction to psychology. Um, they use very similar approaches. We use the same textbook and all that kind of thing, which is good news for you because if you do take those two courses, you know, the things that you invest in for this course, you can use again next term um, or whenever you take AO2, because that's the other thing I'll mention right at the outset. Uh, while they are sort of two halves of the course and while this is sort of the first half, uh, we found through time that students have taken them in various orders. Some people take the second half first uh, before the first uh, and they say it works fine. So, you know, they are two sort of standalone halves. You don't have to go one and then two. You can do them how you want. And by the way, let me also mention that typically both of these courses are offered in the summer term as well. So we have AO1 in the fall, AO2 in the winter, and then both available as a fully online course, which this is uh, as well in the summer term. So be summer 2021. Uh, so you have a lot of flexibility if you do decide to take these two courses, how you do it. Uh, thank you for cho choosing to take uh, this first part now in this fall. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I am Steve. I get to be your um, your professor for this course, and, and it really is an honor and a privilege, and, and it especially is during these COVID days, right, when everything is, is strange and it's, and it's really nice to be part of any kind of community, even if it's a digital community. And so we are part of a very large community here. Um, there will probably be 1,600 or more students who are taking this course. Um, we'll all be going through this together. You will see I will be doing things on the fly as we go. Everything's being recreated in this new COVID world. So it'll be a very dynamic course. Um, and, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, the idea of this lecture that I'm giving here today is it's not really a lecture. It's more of a course introduction and an overview just to give you a sense of what you've gotten into <laughs> and, and whether you, you know, really want to do this, which you do, because it's going to be fun. It's going to be really cool. You'll see. Uh, we use a lot of technology. We used a lot of technology in this course before COVID. And of course, thanks to COVID, uh, even more so. So part of what I want to do today is, is get you acquainted with some of the initial bits of technology that you need to be using. Um, and, and just sort of show it to you, give you a sense of how it looks, and really leave you with an overall sense of how this course is going to play out. Um, so you just feel good, you know, you, you know what, uh, what the expectations are and how it's all going to work. So let's jump into this, and, and we're going to jump in um, just by going right to the internet. So I'm going to uh, leave this and go um, here to Chrome. Um, and in fact, where I want to start is here. And in fact, where I really want to start is here. Um, so let's just make this maximize for now so it takes up. This is my Quercus page. Now, the first thing I want to say about Quercus is um, this is a fancy name. We let students name our learning management system, and they pick this name, Quercus. Um, the actual software underlying this is called Canvas. And you can and should uh, download the Canvas app for your phone. It will allow you to connect right with Quercus and it will also allow you to do things like set notifications so that if we post announcements or something, you can hear about it. Uh, and, and that's a really good idea to stay plugged in. So, you know, that's the first thing. Think about downloading the, the Canvas app uh, and then connecting up uh, to U of T through it, uh, which you should find relatively easy to do. You will, in your dashboard, see a number of tiles. Uh, your tiles will correspond to the courses that you are enrolled in. Um, my tiles correspond to the courses that, that I'm teaching or that I have taught. Uh, so it's a little different here, but we will both have this one, 2020 Fall A01. And once again, I'm going to show you what Quercus looks like, but what it looks like to me is not what it looks like to you. Uh, so don't be alarmed if you log in to this course. You know, when you click on this, what you see is different than what, what you see I'm seeing. <laughs> this is getting complicated already uh, because that's just the case. There's a lot of things we haven't published yet uh, for you guys. We're still building this up uh, and, and it just always looks different on the, on the instructor side. So let me launch in. 
So this is what it looks like on my side. Uh, and uh, a lot of things, you want all these things without the eyeballs you won't see. So it'll be a lot um, shorter over here, the list of things you have. And you're only seeing the things with little green check marks right now, uh, which are the things I'll, I'll talk about a little bit today. Um, as we go through the other things, you know, you see we have all sorts of other stuff coming your way uh, as they become appropriate. I'm going to talk about some of those things, uh, but often, you know, it, there's just there's too much new stuff to hit you with all of this on day one. Uh, and so it's better if we introduce these other technologies and things as they become relevant. I'm going to give you a bit of a show and tell of some of them today. Uh, but, you know, to get to the real deal details, when that becomes relevant, um, we'll talk about it in detail at that point. Okay. So the most relevant things for you today are really Quirkus, the syllabus, getting a sense of what the syllabus is about, and then getting things set up with what we'll call the textbook. As you'll see, it'll be a little different. So these, you know, first two things on your list, and, and you notice uh, Ainsley also has a campus resources and tips. Um, so uh, that sounds like a good thing to check out as well. Uh, but these four first two things are the most important things. Uh, and let's just sort of jump into one of the, uh, jump into those now. So first of all, every course that you're enrolled in should have one of these Quirkus homepages. Um, this is what, this is our primary means of, of communicating uh, in some ways. In fact, let me, before we even get into any of these things, I'm at the home step here. Let me go to the announcements step. And you will notice that Ainsley has already sent something to you. And in fact, if, if you saw this video, I posted this link as an announcement as well. So there will be another announcement in here um, when, you're, when you're looking at this. Uh, you want to see all these announcements. Um, in fact, let me, let me give you a sense. Let me go back in time. Um, to the summer course uh, that we offered here. And when you see the announcements there, you will get a sense. <laughs> you know, we use these announcements heavily uh, to communicate things uh, to you. Anything from exam information to office hours to whatever, this is our way of letting you guys know where things are and you know what you should be thinking about. And I'm gonna go back into to our course here now. Uh, and so, you really want to be seeing those announcements. And this is where with those, uh, if you have the Canvas app, it can be pushing you these announcements when they come in. Okay, so, so make sure you're keeping an eye on those because it really is, you know, one of, always one of the transition issues that students have when they come to university is the fact that it's really up to you now. It's, it's up to you to get things in on time, to do the things that need to be done when they need to be done. If you don't get that done, you're just generally losing marks uh, and, and not really showing us what you're capable of. Uh, and, and so that sucks and it's kind of on you. Uh, and so that's why you know we're saying keep a really good, good eye on this. You will eventually see something, see right here, um, assignment details will be posted here soon. We will very soon post something that has every due date that's relevant to this course. Uh, and, and I will recommend that when we do do that, you put this on your fridge, print it out, you know, have notifications set up on your phone, etc. Uh, just don't miss any of these dates. So between the announcements and this, you know, we won't always announce when something is due. Let me be clear about that. So it's really up to you to kind of have a good sense of the due dates, but, but it's also up to you to keep in touch with the announcements. Okay, so with that said, now let's kind of dive into the syllabus. So every course you have will have, have a Quarkus page. Every course you're enrolled in will also have a syllabus. And they should spend a bit of time, as I am with you right now, going through the syllabus at the beginning of the course. This is where we very clearly describe to you sort of how the course will work. Uh, and, you know, make sure that you understand what we expect of you. Uh, and so that you can make an informed decision about taking the course or not uh, early on. So let's jump in and you'll get a clear sense. So I'm going to click on this. You can download um, this if you want, uh, but I'm just going to look at it right here for now. This is fine. Maybe I'll zoom a little bit more. There we go. Um, and let's just go through this together, okay, uh, which is the, the easiest thing to do. First of all, I'm not that young anymore. That's a, that's a flattering picture of, of my younger days. Um, I, I am this now. Hmm. <laughs> uh, now, 
who's this Ainsley? So the two of us really run this course. And as I mentioned before, it's a 1600 student course. And we've done this for many years. Uh, and one of the things we've learned is it's, it's very important for us to be as clear as possible to, uh, with you guys about the expectations and to set up good communication channels so that everybody knows you know who to reach out to for certain things and in that regard uh, Ainsley and I are, are kind of um, you know uh, have two separate domains of influence within the course I, I would like you to think of me as the psychology guy uh, the the guy that's teaching you intro psych uh, and this this whole course in general so if you have any questions about what you're learning I will be hosting office hours. Um, I will be um, answering emails. Uh, I will occasionally probably have just sort of live uh, QA sessions of some sort. I, I may even give some some sort of optional presentations every now and then or have other people do it. Um, so anything related to the content you're learning, that's sort of my domain. And if you have questions about that, that those come to me. Um, anything else? especially things about grades or assignments or due dates or you know anything to do with the administration of the course just getting through the course that's what Ainsley does um, she she you know as, as we mentioned here missed deadlines accommodations issues with any of the technology etc um, that's I, I, I insist on I don't insist that's too strong a word this is her domain and she's really really good at it and i stay out of it that's the better way to say it so when it comes to any of these issues if you come to me i am going to say talk to ainsley because she really makes sure that all the students are treated fairly uh, there's times we have to have some tough rules on this course you know it just just criteria about performance you have to reach or you know whether we're allowing extensions or not and and whatever it is it's important that whatever we do we apply equally and, and evenly and fairly to the entire course uh, and Ainsley's very good at that and so you know every, anything about that is in her hands anything about contents in my hands you don't really have to worry about this too much because if you want to get in touch with us well, there's sort of two ways. There's office hours I'll talk about, and that's me. Uh, but if you really need to get in touch with us, see this email address here, sia one at utsc.utoronto.ca. Use that for any question. If it's a content question, Ainsley will bump it to me, and she will also make sure I answer you. Um, so, cool. If it's an administrative question, then she'll take it uh, herself. Uh, and so if you can use that one email address and, you know, the email will get to the right place and it'll get answered. Uh, you can probably quite easily find my email address online. I recommend you don't use that. Um, if, if you do use that, depending on when you catch me, um, I may see it and not respond right away, which means I might respond never. And without Ainsley knowing that I'm not responding, it could just get lost. Uh, and so it's, you know, for your sake, use the CIA 011 and that'll make sure you get a response quickly, okay? All right, communication policy. Again, I've already highlighted this, um, but um, we're gonna communicate information to you via announcements on Quercus and via email. And so you are expected to monitor these things uh, on, on a you know daily basis, uh, in a sense, uh, and, and know when, when something's afoot. So that's how we get in touch with you. Um, when you get in touch with us, so I notice it says office hours above, but I didn't actually see us nail it. Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. So let's highlight this. Um, as you're going through the course, and I want to talk about this in a, in a couple of things. Um, I will have office hours, and I will have office hours through... I'm just trying to see where it is right now. I don't see it right now. Okay, so we have to activate um, this and put it in the in the um, panel here. But there will be something called uh, BB Collaborate, Big B, Little B Collaborate. Yeah, right, like this, and and it'll be in this Quercus sidebar, and it's not there yet, um, but but it will be. And Mondays three to four, and Tuesdays eleven to noon. If you click on that, you will see you can click into a essentially a sort of Zoom-like session. Uh, and I will be there. I will be there on the other end. And I will be happy to answer any questions you have. They could be specific questions about the readings. 
Um, they might be general questions about psychology. I try to make these as comfortable as possible. Um, the idea is, you know, it's a chance for us all to talk about what we're learning uh, and for you to ask any questions you might have. I'm quite cool with people coming and just lurking saying I don't have any questions. I'm just going to sit here and listen to others and, and maybe that'll spawn a question. That's fine too. You know, you're welcome to do all those things. Um, and let me actually, I'll, I'll do my first little dig here. I will recommend that if you come to office hours, you see it as an opportunity to practice professional online communication. Uh, and so I will ask you to consider turning your video camera on um, and you know, putting yourself in whatever appearance you you would you would put for for a professional kind of interaction with a colleague, and come on there and, and make it a, a conversation we're having online. There's a lot of skills about interacting with other human beings online. Um, that that um, you know, imagine you're going to be interviewed like that one day, and you may be. You want to learn these skills. You want to be comfortable with that environment. Uh, and I'm, I'm big on trying to teach you the skills of success. And so I will recommend, you know, you use these office hours as a chance for professional interaction uh, and to practice that skill. I won't insist on it. Um, if you turn your video camera off, you turn your video camera off, you have every right to. Um, but it is an opportunity and, and I will encourage you to use that opportunity. More generally though, come on by, stop in, ask questions. Uh, I'll be there. Okay. So... Yeah, visiting office hours if you need to contact us or emailing this course account and use only this email address. Um, also in these email addresses, try not to do the, hey prof, saw you the other day, cool. <laughs> you know, that's fine, I guess. But once again, um, imagine this is, I, I'm a pretty chill guy and you'll get that, you'll get that sense. I'm pretty uh, relaxed and easygoing. But again, you guys will be entering a professional world after your university career. Uh, and again, you will be interacting with uh, colleagues professionally through emails and, and other um, you know, ways of, of interacting. I recommend once again, you use this course and all your courses as an opportunity to practice your professional style emailing approach. Um, so try to make sure things are spelt right. Try to make sure people's names are spelt right. So often people misspell my name, which is no big deal, but to the wrong person, it is a big deal. Uh, so, you know, um, try to be respectful, try to be grammatical, um, try to write your emails like you're representing yourself and your intellect when you're doing it. Uh, and it's just a good habit to be in all through university. And I recommend you do that for all your courses. Okay, so <laughs> there's a lot in one of these syllabi, um, which is important, by the way. You should be reading all your syllabi carefully. Uh, this course, this is just sort of what this course is about. And, and so it's about psychology, which is really cool because it's really about you. Um, you know, you often take courses about physics or chemistry and you're learning about things in your world. In this course, you're learning about you. Um, how you work. Uh, this course tends to be on the more biological side of things. So we're going to learn about your brain. We're going to learn about your sensory processes, your ears, your eyes, you know, how you get sensory information. But we're also going to get to things like memory, attention, consciousness, learning. Um, a lot of these things will have the history. Uh, in, in the first chapter, you're going to get a lot of history of psychology. You're going to get just the scientific method, uh, discussion of the scientific method, how that works. Those are the sorts of things we will cover in this course. Um, it's, it, it's a fascinating, psychology is a fascinating course. Uh, you will find it interesting. I, I can tell you that for sure. You will also find it challenging, not because anything you learn will be particularly difficult, but because there's so much. There's a lot to learn. Uh, this is what we call a survey course or a breadth course, which means we're telling you a little about a lot. Like psychology is a broad area. Imagine it's like a whole menu of a restaurant. We're giving you a taste of all these little things so that you can now decide what things you want to eat more of. That's kind of how we approach um, something like Intro Psych. We give you a broad sense. There's 16 chapters in this textbook. Each one of them is a different sort of approach to psychology. And after you do these, you'll say, oh, I really like this stuff. And I didn't really like that stuff. Uh, and that'll guide you if you want to go into psychology in second or third year, you can focus on the stuff you found interesting. But in this course, you have to experience it all. 
Uh, and we don't do any of it in very much depth. So you learn a lot about this, and then you learn about something else, and then about something else, and then about something else, and that is the challenge. Just you know, getting all of that into your mind, getting that foundational knowledge, as we call it, uh, there. Um, but the good news is, again, you will find it interesting and you'll be learning about yourself as you do. So that will help you as you go through. Also to help you, we are really going to try our best to give you a fantastic online learning experience. Online learning has its own challenges. Um, I give talks to students about you know, meeting those challenges and procrastination and distraction are two of the highest, um, you know, the biggest challenges you'll face. It's not with the course itself, it's getting around to learning the course sometimes. Um, I, I will make some of those um, webinars I've created available to you so you can get a sense of, of my suggestions there. Uh, but we've also tried to design the course and approach it in a way that will hopefully make it really engaging for you. Um, so specifically, this really kicks in with respect to the textbook. We're not really using a textbook per se. Uh, we're using an online platform called Top Hat. Um, it's really a different approach, and, and I think it's a better approach in, in the COVID um, kind of world. Now, in order to make this work, you're going to need to, to purchase two things. Uh, one is the ebook access, and the other is the Top Hat subscription. So together, these will cost you about $84. Now, the good news of that is you can use these for both AO1 and AO2 uh, in the following year. So for $84, for, first of all, $84 is not a bad price for, for a textbook, and especially when you see sort of what it is. Um, but you can use this for two years as well, or two courses rather. Uh, and so that's cool. And in fact, this subscription one, this 3420, if any of the other courses at university uh, that you take use this uh, top hat, you've already got that covered. You'd only have to pay that once for a whole year. Uh, and so any other courses, you don't have to cover that. Okay, cool, cool. Um, Ainsley's got details here about purchasing your code and then redeeming your code to get access to the textbook. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna show it to you. I'll show it to you in just a second. Uh, but let me also mention just this part here, lectures. What we would normally have is you reading along in a textbook, you know, a, a, an old school textbook like this maybe. You know, reading along in a textbook like this and then coming online every now and then to watch lectures that I give you on this textbook. And those lectures used to be like one hour, two hours of me going blah, blah, blah. And quite honestly, probably telling you more things than you could ever be expected to learn. Uh, it's just, it used to be, in my opinion, too much coming at you too fast. We're doing it differently this time. We're going to embed the lectures directly in with the readings and we are going to think of the lectures differently we're not going to have so so just to give you a sense any given um, chapter we tended to lecture for about two and a half hours on it um, so think of that as you know 150 minutes uh, what we're going to do instead now is we're going to have short little video lectures <clears throat> 15 to 25 minutes but we will have four to eight of those per chapter so depending on the chapter maybe more maybe less and so as you're reading you'll suddenly come across oh jordan's wants to give a lecture at this point there's there's something about what you're reading that i want to jump off of and as i mentioned here they're either going to i'm either going to try to make connections amongst the things you're learning or i'll show you the relevance of what you're learning in a, in a covid world maybe or sometimes I will use it as an excuse to, to show you science. Uh, you know, it might tell you about a little thing and I'll dig a little deeper and show you some science behind that thing. Um, show you the so-called programmatic research. But basically, you're going to be reading through that textbook and then every now and then I'm going to say, hey, I want to talk to you a little bit about what you're learning and I want to show you something cool or I want to do something with it. So what's this going to look like? Let me flip quickly here. This is... Um, the Top Hat platform. Now I'm already logged in, and once again, this is an instructor view. It's a little different. Um, but what you'll ultimately see is your textbook kind of broken down on the side here. 
and you can go through and read it as you would a normal textbook, but it'll, it'll be different in a couple of ways. And one of them is um, this. As you go through, you will get multiple choice questions. You know, you'll read a little bit and then you'll get questioned about what you just read. Uh, and other sorts of things will be happening within here too. You'll be reading along and maybe there's some nice figures, um, you know, trying to show something a little bit. Or maybe there's an animated thing trying to make a point. And so this had a question related to it. So the, the bigger point here is, uh, just to show you one more, we might have nice little tables embedded. Again, look at the continual questions, okay? Um, and, the, and there's even things like somewhere here, we'll find like a video or an animation. Um, <laughs> I thought there were more, but to be quite honest with you. Um, you know, little illusions, we can talk about the illusions and go after them a little bit more. They, they, they go through those. But here, um, a little thing on evolution theory. So notice this is embedded right in. Now this is going to be, you can't hear this right now, that's okay, I'm just gonna pause it. This is going to be sort of how my lectures are going to work. Okay, you're gonna be reading along and you're gonna find uh, one of these sitting there and it will be me talking to you about what you're learning. Um, this is 12 minutes, it could be 12 minutes of me. Um, it, it could be as much as 20 minutes. I, I hope to never go as much as 20 minutes. And I may very well follow it up with some questions about what you just learned. Now, let me be clear, doing these questions is part of the learning experience for you. And in some cases, there are correct answers. And so you are expected as you go through this to answer these questions. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and you'll find, by the way, it's really helpful. Uh, you know, sometimes it feels like, oh, are you asking me questions again about what I just read? But I think once you go through it, you'll feel like, oh, I just read something and now I know how to answer that and that's right and it feels really good. Uh, and so this is going to be the kind of learning environment. This is where you're going to, in fact, do most of your learning. Again, lectures and readings all presented together and these little assessments as you go through various other activities and so our goal here is to make the learning more active um, to make it less about just sitting and reading and trying to absorb but read and then do something and then you know get, get a little more active with your interaction with the textbook uh, and, and so we're hoping you find this engaging that it helps you with your procrastination and distractibility because you actually enjoy it um, you want to come back to it uh, you find it interesting um, and then um, yeah, to the extent that, so you see here, there, there may be, I probably won't have homework assignments associated with, with each chapter. If I use slides, I'll probably make my slides available to you, um, so you have that. Um, but otherwise, it would just be a matter of going through these different sections of the textbook and learning as you go. And again, this sort of embedded, embedded videos um, as we go through, sometimes it's very simple. Um, and so they'll, they'll do things like experiments and you'll be able to sort of see an experiment kind of come to life a little bit. So this is just a funny, just to give you, I'll give you a taste, something called change blindness. So, so watch this guy's giving this guy directions. All right. Chugging away while he's giving directions, something happens. And now notice the whole person changes and this guy doesn't even notice. He doesn't have a clue that he's now talking to a completely different person. <laughs> That's called change blindness. Um, so, you know, this gives you an idea that you're learning a little bit about um, some things, but then we show you a video or something that makes it make a little bit more sense. This will be the approach we're using in the course. Okay, so let me go running back here. Hence the textbook, hence the lecture. You can watch these, uh, you can interact with this textbook anywhere. You can use any of your devices, a tablet, you can use your phone um, to read. Um, I think it'll actually read to you if you want it to. So learn a little bit. There is a Top Hat app. You should download the Top Hat app um, once you've done all this stuff and, and um, you can use it to view your material and, and a bunch of other, I think there might be flashcards, other cool things. So check out all that to help you learn. Um, all right. Here's the critical stuff for you. 
you know, what am I going to be asked to do? And there, there's a couple of things um, real quick that we have um, where uh, th these are just uh, academic integrity. This is to teach about plagiarism. Make sure you understand what plagiarism is and not to do it. I'm very serious. This is an actual quiz on the syllabus. We want you to read the syllabus. So, so this is going to happen very early on. Uh, and you're going to be asked about what I'm going through with you now, just to make sure you understand it all. Then I'll show you a structure of this in a bit. We're going to have quizzes after every two chapters. Okay, eight chapters on my part. Every two chapters we'll have a quiz to kind of see, see where you are. We're going to have one of these longer peer scholar uh, assignments and a work integrated learning activity. I'll tell you about those in just a minute. Top hat participation. This is what I've been talking about. As you've been going through that textbook and answering questions, they are worth 7% of the grade. So take those seriously. Uh, you will uh, be able to participate in experiments. Uh, this is our way of letting you actually feel what a psychology experiment feels like. And so that will be available for you. Um, and um, you're going to have a final exam worth 50% of the grade. Dum, da, dum, dum. A cumulative final exam on all eight chapters. Uh, and so, you know, that's the sort of breakdown. I'll show you a little bit more about that in, in a moment. You can also get a little bit more detail on all of these here um, as you go through. And I'm just going to walk you through a little bit of that and give you more of a sense uh, rather than go through this detail. Okay, so let's, let's go back to here. And we've kind of talked about Quirkus and the syllabus. Just to give you a bigger vibe, and this is only meant to give you a sense of the course, um, but I think of the course as, as having four quarters, four parts. Each part involves two chapters. So the first one, chapter one and chapter two, next one, chapter three, chapter four, next one, chapter five, chapter six, chapter seven, chapter eight, two chapters per. At the end of each of these sections, so roughly at the end of the third week, sixth week, ninth week, and twelfth week, we will have an online quiz using something called mTuner. I'll show you that in a moment. Somewhere along the way, we'll also have a peer scholar activity. I'll tell you about that in just a moment. Um, but that's sort of near the half and a little bit towards somewhere. And this one, I will we'll nail down the dates and let you know exactly. Sona is the tool we use to connect you with experiments that are going on. So if you want to participate in experiments, you can get up to 3% participation marks just by doing that. They will we'll tell you about them somewhere around third week, uh, how to sign up, how it works. But then anywhere through the term, you can be signing up for experiments and earning your 3%. So it just kind of continues all through the term. And finally, the work integrated learning uh, experiment, uh, not experiment, activity. I'll tell you about that in just a moment too. Um, okay. So again, this is just a rough guideline. There will be a, a document with specific dates. Look at that. But this gives you a sense of the sort of layout, just so you have a sense of, of where we're going. Um, so for example, for your foreseeable future, for the next three weeks, your real task is to get, get through the first two chapters. My task is to embed lectures <laughs> in those first two chapters, uh, and I will get on that for sure. Okay, so let me just give you a sense of some of these other things and how they connect. So first of all, what is mTuner? <clears throat> mTuner is simply an online multiple choice platform that we use to um, deliver our online exams. Uh, it, um, it's, it's a platform that's meant to teach while it assesses. So it will ask you to answer multiple choice type questions, but if you get them wrong, it will push you towards um, where you can find the answer and it will give you a second chance for half marks. And so the idea is when you get things wrong, we give you a chance to get them right uh, and to really learn that material. So we will show you in detail what the uh, mTuner quizzes look like when we get closer to that date. Uh, but for now, just have in mind that it's sort of a kinder, gentler, multiple choice test where you get second chances. So that's kind of cool. And again, every three weeks we'll have one of those on the, the chapters that you've just been learning and maybe some from the previous chapters as well to kind of build up your knowledge of what you've been learning. This is all to prepare you for that final exam. Right, to make you feel good when you go into the final exam. Um, I also lately have liked to have one of these overarching themes, and they're often, they're often driven by our so-called work integrated learning project. So let me just take a moment and contextualize this. 
so often in university you are given assignments that seem pointless you know you, you work away on the assignment you do what you're asked to do somebody marks it and then it's just sort of thrown away right nobody looks at your work again um, that's fine you can learn a lot on those but there's something really special about so-called authentic assessments, activities. Uh, what we mean by authentic is it's real. Um, you're doing something that's relevant, that has real world relevance. Uh, and one of the ways we do that is so-called work integrated learning. We connect students with people in the real world that have real problems. And we try to bring our students into their world, um, integrate them into this work world to help them solve their problems. Now in later years, this is things like co-ops, right? Where an individual student may actually go and work within a work placement position. At this year, at this point, first year, 1600 students, we obviously can't do that. But we want to give you that same flavor. And so we've come up with a process and I'll give you, a, I'll give you details about that process again as we get closer to it. Um, but it's a process by which you are going to help a real world uh, person with an issue, a real world entity. You are going to provide a solution. Now, once you provide a solution, you're then going to see some of the solutions your, your um, classmates provided and you're going to judge them and only the best solutions will ever get presented to this person at the end. Um, but you're going to be in that game uh, and, and it could be that your solution is one of those best ones and actually has an impact. There's two options we're going to have uh, this year. Both are around learning, which is very core to this course because you're going to learn about memory and attention and learning. And so this is going to be important for the course. The first one is a local flight school who has been teaching students how to fly, but they feel like they are boring their students to death. They feel like their PowerPoints are horrible, that their students are not engaged in the learning process, and they would like to know how they could do it better. They want to up their game and they would love you guys to give them some ideas about how, what they should do differently. You know, what's wrong with what they do and, and how can they do it better? And so I will have somebody from this flight school give a little um, talk online uh, about this problem they're facing and, and um, you know, what they're hoping to see as far as help from, from somebody. Uh, the other one is actually the Ontario Provincial Government, working with the Ontario Provincial Government. As you know, thanks to COVID, Online learning is, is here and you guys experienced it. It probably wasn't great. How can we do that better? You know, how can we really do good online learning? You guys, of course, have the unique perspective of having gone through it, which is already valuable. But we're also going to try to jazz up your knowledge and, and make you even um, you know, more expert to give advice. So. Let me begin by just saying, you'll have a choice. You can do either the flight school or the Ontario government, one or the other, depending on whether you prefer to focus on sort of online learning or more of a class-based learning. That'll be up to you, one or the other. Um, in either case, before you submit your, your thing, you'll be doing a peer scholar activity. And I'm going to be using the peer scholar activity as, as um, a place for you to learn more about learning. Um, quite honestly, to go to some papers, um, to learn about what are effective practices. Um, you know, for example, if it's the flight school, what are, what are you know, good PowerPoint practices that make a presentation more dynamic and interesting and engaging, etc. And so we're going to actually ask you to go to the literature, learn a little bit about this, um, and summarize what you've learned, and, and derive some so-called best practices. Um, this is what you should do according to the research. You know, here are some good things to do. When you suggest these, you'll also then go into a peer review process where I'm gonna ask you to see some of the work of your peers, evaluate it, and, and actually give them feedback, but that's gonna expose you to their best practices as, as well. So after you've done Peer Scholar, you should know a whole lot more about learning and, and how it can be done well. And when you combine that theoretical knowledge of learning 
with your actual experiential knowledge, you know, having gone through it as a student, the hope is that will put you in a strong position to, to make suggestions to one of these two parties. So that's going to be an overarching theme of this class. It's all about learning, online learning, in-class learning. How can we do it really well? And obviously, this is a, a relevant issue uh, for you in your life because you guys will be learning online um, you know, for a while. So, yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. This is an example, by the way, of what I won't do in my other videos. Go on and on and on for a while. There, let me stop here. I do want to stop here. Um, that gives you an overview of the course. It gives you a sense of what's going to happen. It's going to start in earnest this week. Um, I, I do have to do some hard work to get all my lectures uh, up for the first two chapters. Um, I'm, I'm on it, <laughs> all over it now. I'm, I'm just sort of reconceiving my old approach and trying to figure out the right way to do it here. Um, but you will see those in your top hat. You will see chapter one become available very shortly. Uh, I'm hoping Tuesday or Wednesday, you'll see that available. You can start going through that chapter two shortly thereafter that, and then etc. As I kind of get things up, you'll see the chapters come available and you can start going through them ahead of time. I do hope learning should be fun. Learning should be enjoyable. Um, it should be sort of exciting. It should be making you curious and provoking thought. That's what I hope this course is. It should also be relevant. You should also see the relevance of what you're doing. So I'm going to try to bring all of those things in. And, and um, I'm hoping you have a really fun, thought-provoking, um, personally developing experience in this course. That's what we're up to. And so I look forward to, to seeing you. I am going to, the next time you're going to see me, will be inside the Top Hat textbook. So that'll be your first challenge. Um, see if you can find me in there for my sort of welcome to the Top Hat textbook video. Uh, and we will go from there. Alrighty. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.